If you or anyone you love needs a hand, shine light on the darkness, speak on it, silence the shame. Yo, what up, though? It's your boy Jeezy. That's right, the big homie. And I think it's time that we start the conversation to silence the shame. Join us and silence the shame. Silence the shame. Mm, welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Our next guest is breaking the silence on the issue of mental health and the epidemic that silently plagues our community for far too long. Along with the help of many of her celebrity friends, she created the initiative Silence the Shame. Please yes. welcome author, music industry exec, philanthropist, and my friend, Shanti hey. Daz. Hi. Hi. So excited to have you hey, here today. Thank you today. ladies for having me. I love the show, by oh, the way. Oh, thank you very thank much. You. Thank yes. you very much. So we got to go all the way back. Yes. 25 years ago, you you know, celebrating in the music industry. Mm -hmm. I, I know you from LaFace Yes, Records. we, we worked, worked together. together. Yes, <laughs> but you were responsible for really catapulting the career, namely of Outkast, Tony Braxton, mm -hmm. TLC, mm -hmm. Usher, so many more. Talk a little bit about how you were able to shape that, those creative people into who they are today. So I was just a hungry little girl. When I graduated from Syracuse University, I got a job working at LaFace Records right out of college four months after. And the first record I ever worked was Players Ball. Wow. And I was just so passionate about it and happy to be walking in my purpose at the time. So L.A. Reid put a lot of trust and faith in me and allowed me to kind of do my thing. And mm -hmm. so I ended up being able to help shape the careers of not only Outkast, but TLC and Usher and Tony Braxton and so many more. Mm -hmm. yes, truly, yes. I'm truly grateful. Yes. My goodness. Yeah. Shanti, you have worked with some amazing artists. Thank and you. very big, and I'm, I'm assuming very, well not assuming, very busy artists. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, you know that the industry can be, be very chaotic. Mm -hmm. What is your take? on Kanye West and the current state of how he's behaving. The one thing I can say about Kanye is um, I think he needs to take a serious look at what's going on mm -hmm. and the people around him really need to embrace him. I think as a culture, we shouldn't be putting him down. This brother is going through it. Yeah. Um, I've seen other people that have certain symptoms of mental health disorders and they really need to pay attention and get him some help. Who yeah. do you think in his camp, um, just who do you think needs to kind of pull them over to the side and just kind of get them together. Childhood friends, mm -hmm. you know, any real family members, and his wife. I mean, that's who he's with 24-7. Right. So I, you know, I encourage them to really sit down and get him the help that he needs. Right. And Carrie Hilson, she just came out and talked about her battle with depression. Mm -hmm. And you also have your own story about your battle mm -hmm. uh, with depression and all the things that you have gone, to th gone through since your childhood. Mm -hmm. How did you even get to the place where you could ask for help and tell your story? It was really difficult. My father committed suicide when I was seven months old. And four years ago, my best friend committed suicide. Oh, I have okay. a family member that suffers from bipolar one disorder. And two years ago, in tw or two and a half years ago in 2015, I decided to contem well, I co contemplate taking pills. And so that's when I hit rock bottom. Um, sometimes it's still difficult for me to talk about. Mm -hmm. But my pastor ironically told me that I needed to seek help. And it was my sister, Maria, who said, call the suicide prevention hotline. And I called and I went and saw a psychiatrist and I got the help that I needed. Mm -hmm. But it took me hitting rock bottom yes. to realize that. Mm -hmm. As successful as I was, it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. No one is immune to this. Yeah. That's interesting that you say your pastor mm -hmm. was the one that told you to go to therapy because a lot of times we feel like, oh, we run to the church. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the cure. Um, Mariah Carey just came out mm -hmm. and, and talked about her being bipolar and right. uh, you know a lot of other artists, Tyrese, Ryan Reynolds. Do you think that because of the way that the industry is set up with social media and, and, and uh, supporters being able to touch us so easily mm -hmm. that that increases the fear of them coming out and really talking about it and really dealing with it? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think the stigma is still there. No one wants to be called crazy. Right. right. And so when you look at social media, we're going through people's highlight reels, mm -hmm. right? And only looking at the great accomplishments, mm -hmm. but not some of the things that they're going through that are very personal. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I applaud Mariah for coming out yeah. and being open and sharing. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about Silence the Shame. Yes. And why this day is so big for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So last year on May 5th, we launched Silence the Shame Day and we received over 90 million impressions. So this year, National Day calendar recognized May 5th as Silence the Shame Day moving good, forward. Good, good, good. Yes, and we're doing a national tax to raise funds. Good, mm -hmm. good, good, good. Awesome. Now, how, do, how else do, can we encourage people to seek uh, therapy? You know, mm -hmm. it's such a, such a stigma. How do we break that stigma of people not going to see a therapist? Number one, we have to stop being judgmental. Mm -hmm. When you have that family member or Uncle Pete in the back who mm -hmm. only comes out just for dinner, something might be wrong with Uncle Pete. Right. So right. we need to talk to each other more and be willing to listen and be open, you know, if someone has something going on. And because I think oftentimes we feel like, I don't want my child or my son to have anything wrong with them. So we're embarrassed and we want to keep up with the Joneses. 
stop, slow down, listen, talk, and don't be judgmental. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where do you see Silence of Shame going from here? Oh my gosh, we uh, want to take Silence of Shame around the world. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Being mental health advocates, uh, we want to produce a lot of other programs. We do a lot of mental health panel discussions. We provide mental health first aid training. Okay. And one day we want to open the Silence of Shame Wellness Center here yes. in Atlanta. Yes. You will open it. We will yes. open it. Come yes, on. praise God, right? Mm -hmm. um, to serve those in underserved communities that can't afford the treatment. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I'm so glad that you were able here to talk about Silence yes. of Shame. We need to hear it. Thank Please you. come back and share your progress, and we'll definitely support Shanti. Thank you yes. so much thank for being so here. Thank you so much, ladies. If anyone uh, needs help, please have them reach out to the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. And that number is 1-800-273-8255, or they can text the keyword silence to 741741.